Okay, here we go, section 8-1. I've been harping on this all year. I don't know if you remember, but um, remember I said we have um, we have chapters on um, you know quadrilaterals. We have chapters on triangles, and it seems like every chapter I said we even have a chapter not just on triangles, but on what kind of triangles? Right triangles. Okay, we have a whole entire chapter just on right triangles. Anybody remember me saying that throughout the year? Yeah. Well, guess where we are. Yes, yeah, very good. We're on right triangles, okay? So um, let's do this. Let's grab me a right triangle right here. And actually, before I do that, I'm not going to do that just yet. I want to go through a little, um, I don't know what you would call it. It's just like a little mathematical um, proportion, I guess. That would be a good thing to call it. And I'm not really going to go through any explanation of how they get this thing or what it really actually means. Um, I'm just going to show you how to use it. And most of you are probably just fine with that anyway. Okay, Just show me how to use it. Just show me how to get the right answer. That's not really what I'm all about. But as far as this is concerned, let, I'm just going to show you this little proportion, a little, uh, it's not really a trick, but um, I don't even know if it's a theorem. I don't even think it's a theorem. They, anyway, I'll just show you. They call it this. They call it the geometric mean. Now, what do you think of, in math-wise anyway, when you think of mean? Okay, average, okay? So it's kind of like an average. It's not really an exact average like you would, you know, you're used to. Um, I don't even know how I could explain this, so that's why I'm not even going to attempt to explain it, okay? Maybe I should have looked it up and gave you some great explanation, but you could always do that if you're really interested in that. But it's called the geometric mean. This is really, really helpful. There's a couple ways to do these problems, and I think using the geometric mean is the best way to do this. So um, let's do this in colors. Watch this. What I'm going to do... Earlier I said it's a proportion, so I'm going to set up a fraction equal to another fraction. So this is a proportion. First thing I'm going to do is the geometric mean. What is the geometric mean? We'll do this in yellow. The geometric mean is that right there. Okay, that's what I'm solving for. That's what I'm actually trying to find. Okay, I'm trying to find what x is equal to. So in order to set up the geometric mean, and you'll see why we're going to do this. There's a very practical reason for doing this in just a few minutes. Okay, um, In order to set this up, I'm going to put an X here and an X down here. They're diagonal. Now look, I could have, if I wanted to, I could have put an X up at the top right, but then what, where would I have to put the other X? The bottom left. Everybody see that? Okay. As long as they're diagonal to each other. It doesn't matter if it's like this or if it's like this. But X is the geometric mean between uh, two other numbers. And uh, we'll just call those two numbers. We'll be very general right here. We'll just call those other two numbers A and B. So this is how you find the geometric mean. This probably means nothing to you right now, but as soon as we do an example, um, you'll at least see how we, uh, how we use this thing. So that's the geometric mean. Remember, what, what are we solving for? We're solving for x. Okay, that's the geometric mean. A and B will be two numbers that you know. They'll either give them to you, or you can look at a picture and figure out which numbers should go in those two spots right there. Does that make any sense? Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you two numbers. I'm going to give you 8 and 10. And the question says, find okay, the geometric mean between those two numbers. All right? It'll say, find the geometric mean between 8 and 10. So what do you do? You come up here to our little uh, definition, I guess, of geometric mean, our little proportion. And it says, find the geometric mean. Which one up here is the geometric mean? What are we solving for up here? We're solving for x. We're solving for x. That's what we're solving for. Okay, The a and b represent the two numbers. Okay, So what do we do? This is how I set it up. Watch. I put a fraction equal to another fraction. First thing I do is I put my x's here and here. Is that all right? Let's change colors right there. So I put the x's right here. That's what I'm solving for. That's how I set up the geometric mean every single time. So whenever they say, find the geometric mean, the first thing I do is I put x's right there. Now, find the geometric mean between what? Between two numbers. Well, what are my two numbers? 8 and 10. Right, 8 and 10. So I just put an 8 here 
and a 10 here. It really doesn't matter which place you put the 8, because when we do the math, you'll see in a second that all you're going to do is multiply these together. All right? So look, I got a proportion. How do I normally solve for a proportion? Cross multiply, that's right. So let's do that. Let's cross multiply. This is a little bit different than the cross multiplication that we did in the um, last little section with proportions. But let's see what we get. If I multiply here, what's that equal to? What is it? 2x? x times x? It's x squared, right. x times x is x squared, not 2x. x plus x is 2x. x times x is x squared. Okay, so I multiply those two together. Multiply these two together, what do I get? I get 80. Okay. No, it's not 800, it's 8 times 10, all right? So 8 times 10 is 80. And now, is that it? Are we done? Square root both sides, right. You remember that from Algebra 1, don't you? Square root both sides. So x equals the square root of 80. Um, this is always my big debate whether I should uh, make it write it like this or not. But um, I'll tell you what, let's, instead of going 8 times 10, let me just show you a little trick. You should have learned this in Algebra 1, but it seems like a lot of people don't really get a full handle on this in Algebra 1. But let me just show you real quick. When you get to Algebra 2 and you do this stuff, they're going to expect you to be able to do this in Algebra 2. Since this is geometry, um, I don't know if I'm right in doing this or not, but I'm going to probably let you keep it the square root of 80. But let me just show you how to simplify this. Um, you could do it a couple ways. You could have just, instead of actually multiplying them together, you could have kept it 8 times 10 and then split this up. Do you remember doing this in Algebra 1? Okay, 8 is the same as 4 times 2, and 10 is the same as 2 times 5. Agreed? In Algebra, we got this little rule that says this, that if all these things are being multiplied, I can put them under its own little individual square root. So this is the same as the square root of 4. Look at this. What's that 2 times 2? That's a 4, isn't it? So that's a square root of 4. And then what do I have left? Square root of 5. Do you remember that from Algebra? No? It's not hard to see, though, is it? If you didn't see it in Algebra 1, I mean, you see it now, right? It's not that hard. So I just split them up. Now, why did I make it a 4 and a 4? Well, because I can take the square root of 4. It comes out nice and easy. What's the square root of 4? 2 times what? Another 2 times what? It's not 5. It's a square root of 5. It's a square root of 5. The square root of 5 is what number times itself is equal to 5. Okay, so it's like 2 point something, right? Well, it's not necessarily 2.5, but it's 2 point something, okay? So um, I'm going to leave it the square root of 5. Let's simplify this a little bit further. 2 times 2 is 4, what? Square root of 5. So the square root of 80 is the same exact thing as 4 times the square root of 5. Now, I'll show you this periodically. I don't know if I'm going to force you to write your answers like this because, um, I don't know, it's, it doesn't take forever, but this is, this is a way, in Algebra 2, you, sh you need to get used to this, okay? So you really should try to, uh, to know how to do this. I mean, this should be a skill that you master in Algebra 1, to tell you the truth. Um, but I've noticed in my experience as a geometry teacher that a lot, of, a lot of Algebra 1 kids don't know how to do this at all. So I'm teaching it for the first time. Um, but anyway, if you put that into a calculator, try it. Who's got a calculator? Hit the square root of 80, get a number, and then put in 4 times the square root of 5, get a number. You'll get the exact same number. won't even be any different at all. all right? But I'll tell you right now, I'll let you keep it square root of 80. I would rather you not change it into a decimal. I really would. Okay? Just keep it the square root of 80. Don't even change it to a decimal. Okay? It's not going to come out to a whole number. Well, if it comes out to like 36, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. If it comes out to the square root of 36, absolutely change it to a whole number, right? Or the square root of 81, right? And that's 9. Yeah, definitely. If it comes out to a whole number, definitely write it as a whole number. There's no doubt about that. Okay, Jacob? All right. Um, does that make sense on geometric mean? That's not too hard, is it? Let's do another one just real quick here. Uh, let's change colors. Uh, let's go back. Let's go red. All right, watch. It says find the geometric mean. Find. We'll just shorten it. Is that all right? Geometric mean uh, between, it says, between. Let's do this one 12 and 15. Okay? Let's find the geometric mean between these two numbers, 12 and 15. Go ahead and try that on your own. Give it a second. 
it doesn't matter where you put the 12 and the 15 because you're just multiplying them together anyway, right? So it doesn't make any difference. You can't reduce now. No, you can't, you can't reduce them right now because this is on one side of the equal sign. This is on the other. It's not like they're being multiplied, right? If it was being multiplied, then you could say 3 goes into this, 3 goes into this. You can't do that with an equal sign in between them, okay? Does that make sense? All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to get x squared equals. Now, let me show you a little trick. Let's simplify this. And since we started talking about this, I'm going to do it down here. Watch, 12 times 15. It's not that hard. I don't know why. It just takes a little extra thought, and kids freak out when I make you think a little bit. All right, but let's think a little bit. I don't mind freaking out a little bit. So watch. Let's break this down. You could go 6 times 2. What would, what would be a better number to choose? Yeah, I would go 4 times 3. Okay? And the reason I went 4 times 3 is because I know what this is going to break down into. Into what? 3 times 5. See how easy this is? Now watch. I could just look at this. I'm going to take the square root of 4. What is the square root of 4? It's just plain old 2. It's a whole number 2. So I'm done with that. What about this thing right there? What is that? It's a square root of 9, which is a 3. So I multiply. It's just a plain whole number 3. So I'm done with that. What do I have left? Square root of 5. Right? And it stays under the square root because I can't take the square root of 5 and it come out even. All right, it does come out to a number, but it's some decimal, crazy decimal number. I'm just going to write it like this. 2 times 3 is 6, square root of 5. That's really the best way to write it. Now, you could just go 12 times 15. I don't even know what that is off the top of my head. What's 12 times 15? What is it? 180. Okay, so you could go the square root of 180. But that's not simplified. This right here is simplified. And I think this is a nice, easy way to do it. I don't think that's that hard. Do you? Take 12, break it down. Take 15, break it down. And then find what you can take the square root of. I don't think that's that hard at all. Something that should have been learned in Algebra 1. It's not necessarily. Okay, let me go through. we got 10 minutes, and I'll need all of those 10 minutes. So here is where we're going to use this stuff. All right, this is really where it comes in handy. I'm going to skip right to the uh, geometric mean part of this. I'm going to draw it like that. If I can get it to even. That's not too bad. Okay. All right. This is where we use this. This is a right triangle. The right angle is right here. Here's the situation. It's not a very, I mean, I guess it could be a common situation. I don't know. But anytime you have this situation, this is where we use the geometric mean. We use it with right triangles. This whole chapter is about right triangles. So if I have a right triangle, and for some reason they always sit it like this. You don't have to. It could be all kinds of ways. But if I draw an altitude from that right angle, what does that mean, an altitude? We've talked about that. Straight, okay, straight down, but what? Perpendicular, right. Perpendicular to the opposite side. Okay. Or it's perpendicular to, what's the opposite side of a right angle called? It's got a big fancy name. Anybody know it? Hypotenuse. Very good. Okay. So we'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about right triangles. We're not getting into that just yet. All right. Uh, let me find some, I'll just put some letters in here. Okay. So this right here, let's give this color. Okay, this right here is our um, altitude, or I'll call it h for height, okay, because I'm going from here, perpendicular to here, that's our h. I'll call this side right here, I'll call that a, I'll call this side right here b, I'll call this one x, and I'll call this one y. Everybody see that? And let's do this. Let's call this whole entire side c. All right, we'll go like this. All right, here's how we use the geometric mean. Let's do the hypotenuse, or the uh, height, the height first. I'm going to set this up. I'm not going to give you, like, words and write down a bunch of sentences and stuff like that. I'm just going to show you by proportion how you can set this up. Now, how did we get to this? If I had more time, if I had, like, another 20 minutes, I could show you that this triangle, this triangle right here, and the whole triangle, they're all similar to each other. All three of these triangles are similar to each other. And if you arrange them and made some ratios, made some proportions, this is how your proportions are going to come out, okay? It's a little confusing to see it at first. I just don't have time to go through all that right now. So I'm just going to show you what the proportions come out to be. If you're really concerned about it, you can look in the book and they'll show you. So let me show you this real quick. H. 
H is actually a geometric mean. I'll circle the geometric means. Actually, I'll do this. Let's change the geometric means into a different color. Um, let's go pink. All right. So that's a geometric mean. All right. A is also going to be a geometric mean, and so is B. Well, right now we're working as if these were, we're just working general, okay? They will give these as numbers, okay, in, or, in order to do this. But we're just trying to come up with a nice little formula here, all right? Um, let's just go blue. So here it is. H is the geometric mean between, actually, I guess I could have just done this in that pink color. Just keep everything consistent right here. Okay, and now let's change it to yellow. Okay. Watch. H is the geometric mean. This altitude is a geometric mean between the two segments that are cut off on this hypotenuse. Do you see this big hypotenuse? See how it's cut off right here? This side is X, this side is Y. H is the geometric mean between X and Y. Now normally X and Y would be a regular number. Okay, but right now I'm being very, very general with my little formulas here. So H is the geometric mean between X and Y. That's our first proportion. So if I knew what x and y was, what would I do? Just stick it in for here and here, cross multiply, solve for h, and I've got that length right there. I've got h. Okay? Does that make any sense? All right. Let's do uh, a and b are really close to each other. So watch this. Here's another. There's three of them all together. Okay? A is also a geometric mean, so I'm going to put the a here and what else? The a down here. Well, it's the geometric mean between what two numbers? Now here's the part that's a little bit tricky. A is a geometric mean between the entire hypotenuse. What is? What did I label the whole entire hypotenuse? C. C. And the segment of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that side A. So it's broken up into two segments. Which one is closest or adjacent to A? X is. So right there. Now remember, these are going to be numbers, aren't they? This X, Y, and C are going to be numbers. So if I wanted to find what A was equal to, that's a geometric mean between the whole thing, C, and the side that's adjacent to A, so the one that's closest to it. Everybody see that? Now, B, I said earlier, was really, really close to A. So B is also a geometric mean. It's supposed to be equals. So B is a geometric mean. What do you think? Just off the top of your head, what do you think? C and Y. Very good. All right, so let's change colors. C and why. Now you're probably thinking, well, how did you get all that stuff? Well, it's in the book how we got the stuff. Again, if I had more time, I'd go through and show you how we got it. But right now, um, just understand that these things are true. Let's do this just for fun. Let's do it. Let's do, um, I'm going to make some numbers up. Okay, this will be as basic as it can get. Um, what does that look like? About three. That looks about five. Okay, so we'll, we'll use those numbers right there. So if I asked you, <coughs> excuse me, if I asked you to solve for H, how would you solve for H? Well, H is a geometric mean, isn't it? So I'm going to put H here and H here. I'm going to use the same color here. Between what and what? 5 and 3. So you put a 5 here and a 3 here. Does it matter which? No, it doesn't. So let's, uh, let's do some math. Let's do it real quick. So H squared is equal to 15. So H is? It's just the square root of 15. There's nothing else you can do with that. That's your answer. That's how long H is right there. Okay, so we found H. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Let's find A and B. Well, A is also a geometric mean. So I set up my little geometric mean, put the A here and the A here. But A is a geometric mean between what and what? Not between 3 and 5 again, but between what? 7? How about 8? Eight? 8's the whole thing, right? So 8 is the whole thing. All right, so A is the geometric mean between the whole hypotenuse and the part that's next to A. So what's, what are my two numbers? 8 and 5. Okay, so let's do this. A cross multiply, A squared. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm not going to go 40. I'm going to go 8 times 5. Why did I do that? Because 4 times 2 is 8, isn't it? And I can't break 5 down any further. So what's the only thing I can break down? It's that one. So watch what a is equal to. It's 2 times the what? Square root of 10. See how easy that is? It's not hard to simplify those radicals at all. 
Let's do um, y and or b, sorry, and we'll be finished. All right. So b is the geometric mean between what number and what number? Eight and three this time. Right. The whole thing and the side that's next to the b. So it's just between eight and three. Eight and three. Cross multiply. B squared. Watch. I'm not going to go 24. I'm going to go 8 times 3. Why? I'm going to take the square root of both sides, right? So what's the square root of 8? Well, let's break it down. 4 times 2. And then you got a 3 in there. Stick a 3 in there as well. What's the square root of 4? 2. What's left in here? Square root of 6. So that's what B is equal to. There you go. You've got your 3. You've got your A, your B, and your H right there. All right? And that's pretty much it. That's the kind of stuff that they're going to ask you to do. All right, so they're going to give you two numbers, find the geometric mean, and then they're going to give you a triangle like that, and you've got to find the geometric mean. And I know you want to practice this stuff. Yeah. So, so it's section 8-1, pages 535 to 537. I split it up a little bit, 8 to 13, and then I jumped to 18, and I went to 30. It looks like a lot, and it probably is, but it's okay. We'll circle it like that.